What is an ectopic pregnancy? I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified OBGYN and a fertility doctor. Today I want to talk about ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancies have taken a new interest since Roe got overturned because the management of them, it is an abortion. When we look at the word abortion, it's a medical term. It means a pregnancy does not make it to viability. Anything that does not make it to viability is an abortion. It can be a spontaneous abortion, just like a miscarriage, you start bleeding. It can be an incomplete abortion, which means you start bleeding, but not all that placenta fragments come out and you need a surgical procedure or medication to help that. It can be an elective abortion or a termination, and it can be an ectopic pregnancy, which also falls into the abortion category. That's how we categorize your pregnancies. Now, that being said, most of us don't really consider it in the abortion category because it's its own thing and they're non-viable. Like why even talk about them? However, medical words have meaning and when medical words get written into bills, things like conception, fertilization, implantation, heartbeat, abortion, termination, these things have meaning. So it's really important because we're seeing a huge interest in the management of ectopic pregnancies. And we're seeing stories I'm hearing from my colleagues and we're seeing them online of ectopic pregnancies that are being not managed appropriately and delaying care. So we need to break that down today, but first you need to understand that. Okay, so officially, what is the definition of an ectopic pregnancy? It's any pregnancy that is outside the uterus. So the uterus is where pregnancy normally implants, but ectopics can occur anywhere. By far and away, the most common ectopic pregnancy is the fallopian tube. That's because that's where fertilization occurs. So egg and sperm meet in the fallopian tube. The egg must be fertilized while in the fallopian tube. The embryo then grows and develops over the course of the next five to six days till it reaches the uterine cavity and that is when implantation can occur. So the embryo is alive for many days before you're pregnant because a pregnancy requires proper implantation. Many eggs get fertilized that never implant. That's part of the body's process. However, Anything that gets the egg stuck in that road in the tubes can cause an ectopic pregnancy or a tubal pregnancy. There are other types of ectopic pregnancies. You can have an ovarian ectopic where the pregnancy gets fertilized, comes out of the tube and attaches to the ovary. There's abdominal pregnancies, which these are case report level. Probably most of your OBGYNs have seen like one in their career and it's a very memorable moment. We had one when I was a resident. She lived in West Texas. She was found to have a pregnancy outside her uterus on ultrasound at 22 weeks of gestation. Crazy, nobody knew that it was outside her uterus. They said they couldn't help her and to go to another hospital. So she got on a plane and flew to Dallas so that we could take care of her. The surgery was very complex. It had invaded into her blood vessels, like not her uterus, but like her actual blood vessels, her iliacs and other things. So these are crazy, wild, very rare situations that if allowed to go to term, that pregnancy totally take over and kill the mom. Dangerous, dangerous ectopic pregnancies outside the uterus. But typically the word right now, ectopic pregnancy is pretty much synonymous with a tubal pregnancy. So when a pregnancy implants in the fallopian tube, it absolutely in no way, form or fashion can grow to viability. It can't get very far at all. That's because essential for a pregnancy is for a placenta to get blood vessels that can grow into another set of blood vessels in the uterus usually, and that's going to give enough blood supply to get mom to baby blood. The fallopian tube does not have this. So it is a ticking time bomb, really. And so what happens is when a pregnancy starts to implant there, you'll get a positive pregnancy test. You will have all the normal pregnancy symptoms. Your progesterone will be high. Your levels can even raise. Normally, you cannot see pregnancies on ultrasound until you're about five and a half weeks pregnant at the very earliest. So if you know exactly when everything's happening, the day you ovulate, you're considered two weeks pregnant. Remember this, because pregnancies are dated back before we had ultrasound or we knew when ovulation occurred. So it dates back to your last menstrual period. And because most people ovulate around day 14, the time you ovulate before egg and sperm have ever met, you're two weeks pregnant. By the time an embryo starts to implant, you're two weeks, five days pregnant. By the time you get a positive pregnancy test, you're four weeks pregnant. So when we talk about weeks in pregnancy, about six weeks, this or that, the embryo hasn't been alive that long. It's important to realize. But if you have bleeding in early pregnancy, you can't even see a, a normal pregnancy for those first couple weeks normally. You'll get a positive pregnancy test, 
but it's very hard even if things are perfect you can't see it on ultrasound yet so this leads to a middle ground situation that a lot of patients find them in called a pregnancy of unknown location pregnancy of unknown location is something that's not normal your hcg hormone should approximately double every 48 hours and when it's not it's not growing appropriately it can either not be growing appropriately in the uterus or it could be not growing appropriately in the fallopian tube but what we usually say is it's a non-viable pregnancy but i don't know where it is because you're so early we we can't see it previously you had no choice but to let those declare themselves let it get big enough to go in the fallopian tube let the fallopian tube rupture start having bleeding and maybe miscarry that way there was just nothing to do but now what we do is we know that these pregnancies that are normal and viable have a certain hcg rise and if we don't see that we can intervene sooner so doctors can do manual vacuum aspirations or like a suction procedure where you take the lining of the uterus out and if you had an abnormal pregnancy there your hormone level should drop or you can use a medication like methotrexate which is a chemotherapy medication it's a folic acid antagonist so it stops folic acid from being able to get into cells and folic acid is an essential part of cell division and so it stops the pregnancy from dividing therefore terminating it and so you can utilize one or both of these methods to treat very early abnormal pregnancies before they get to the point where you're rupturing, bleeding internally, or having a medical emergency. Now, what we're fearful of is that in these pregnancies that, you know, if life begins at fertilization and you have a positive pregnancy test, are you going to be able to manage these? Texas has been having the heartbeat bill, so you have to have a heartbeat to make it questionable. And the clause for the life of the mother has allowed us to properly treat ectopic pregnancies. However, every state is a little bit different. With the protection of Roe v. Wade, it allowed doctors to manage these non-viable pregnancies in all states without any, without any fear. Did what's best for the mom. These pregnancies are not going to make it. But now what we're seeing is some states have really harsh felony level charges. And so doctors and providers are uncertain about how to act. Legal teams are getting involved and there's a delay in care. So some things that we are seeing, number one, and I have personally seen this, is the pharmacist not wanting to fill the methotrexate medication. That's crazy. I mean, any pharmacist anytime can decline to fill a medication. They have to feel like it's professionally appropriate, but we've seen that they feel like they don't want to fill this. And so that's a scary thing. Methotrexate is also used for many things, not reproductive at all, like autoimmune disease and other things. And then we're also seeing reports of hospitals where an ectopic pregnancy is rupturing and they're waiting for the patient to be at risk, like life at risk, because the law is written in their state where you can intervene to save the life of a mother in like an acute situation or an urgent indication. So even though this is a non-viable pregnancy, they're waiting for people to bleed out in their abdomen, for their hemoglobin to drop, for their blood pressure to drop, for them to pass out. These things, having hemorrhagic shock is a very dangerous thing. This could require blood transfusion, a much more massive surgery, and it can lead to death. So we have pregnancy of unknown location, which can have medical office space interventions. It could be abnormal in the uterus or the tube, but it's not normal. We are worried that some of these medications or procedures could be at risk in some places. And then we have ectopic pregnancy. We know a pregnancy is not in the right place. We cannot take it and implant it. It's in the tube. You cannot grab it and put it in the uterus. I had an ectopic pregnancy. If it could have been implanted from my tube into my uterus, I would have done it in a heartbeat because that was my fourth pregnancy loss and I was desperate to be a mom. However, that's not something you can do. I received methotrexate, did not have to undergo surgery. I'm very thankful to access to that medication. So some of the signs of an ectopic pregnancy include pain when you're early pregnant, especially if you've not gotten to that first ultrasound and seen a pregnancy inside your uterus. Having spotting in early pregnancy, especially if it's like darker spotting, that could be a risk factor. Um, and then if you have a tube rupture, I always tell patients, you know it when it happens. A immediate, acute, doubling over pain. Blood filling the abdomen is not a normal thing to experience and you know something is wrong. You should seek medical care if you have bleeding in early pregnancy and your pregnancy has not been found to be in the uterus, severe abdominal pain, and you let your OBGYN know. If you have acute onset of pain, you pass out, you go to the emergency room, period, the end. What is scary right now is watching these people sit on ectopic pregnancies and not provide acute life-saving intervention. What we are seeing is statewide laws written without understanding medical terminology or what it means in these different states of pregnancy is leading to uncertainty and delay in care. And it is absurd to me that some people may be forced to sit on, meaning sit in the ER and watch patients become sicker before you can intervene. 
I'm also really afraid of patients not wanting to seek medical care and then having these outcomes at home. I mean, a long time ago, I transferred two embryos with IVF cycle and I had a patient have something called a heterotopic pregnancy. This is where one pregnancy is in the uterus and one is in the fallopian tube. You can't take methotrexate in this indication or you terminate both pregnancies. This was highly desired. So the patient needed to have the tube removed. However, she didn't go straight to the hospital from the clinic. She went to her house. She passed out in the bathroom. Luckily, her partner was home and found her on the floor and got her to the hospital in the emergency room in time. A delay of just minutes can be life and death when you have acute bleeding inside your abdomen like that. And so this is a very scary time. You deserve to seek medical care. If you are experiencing bleeding in pregnancy, please call your doctor or go to the emergency room. Ectopic pregnancies used to be a huge killer of women. Medical care has advanced and they're really not anymore. And I do not want to see us go back to that time frame. A few last tidbits. Most ectopic pregnancies just happen. Some risk factors include smoking increases your risk significantly, probably because it changes the motility of the fallopian tube. Prior sexually transmitted infections, chlamydia specifically, has a high incidence of blocking the fallopian tubes or causing scar tissue, so you have a higher risk of getting an ectopic pregnancy. So do medical conditions like endometriosis, um, inflammatory bowel disease, having a prior like ruptured appendix, that can all lead to scarring inside the fallopian tubes for an unstable environment, increase the chance of an ectopic pregnancy as well. If you've had a prior ectopic pregnancy, you're at risk for future ectopic pregnancies. So please make sure you disclose that to your doctor. And if you are pregnant again subsequently, you should get early monitoring around six weeks. Make sure that pregnancy is in the uterus. Thankful for you guys to be on this channel and to listen and to support me trying to provide education about fertility and your body. This is a really scary time for us taking care of people in a really uncertain world but I appreciate you all supporting this channel, sharing this information. You can also support us at Doctors for Fertility, a nonprofit and political action committee where we're trying to make sure that you get the proper reproductive health care you need no matter where you are. You can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, and as always, you can listen to the As Woman podcast. Please subscribe here, friends. Thanks, y'all.